Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Christmas tree gnomes, and I've been on some hot cocoa. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, green oxide, cobalt blue, Mars black, fire red, chrome yellow, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And of course, you can certainly switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will most likely call these out as small, medium, and large. And of course you can switch those up if you'd like. That's what I'll be using. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You could also, in my shop, purchase things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's it. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a background onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, blue, and white. I'm gonna use my number six round to pre-mix myself a custom blue color. So what I'm gonna be doing, I want this to really look winter-esque. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a lot of a soft grayish blue in my background. I will be adding some snow falling from the sky and some snow on the ground and stuff, but I wanna start with a soft um, grayish blue color for my background. I'll use it in little gradients, but I'm gonna first make myself my custom color, which I have already done on my palette here. So this is the color that I'm going for. How I got to this is white, blue, and black. So I've got a good amount of white, a good amount of blue, and just a little bit of black. So what I'm in essence doing is adding gray to my cobalt blue, and this is gonna give me a nice, soft, almost like a, a country type of blue, just a dusty type of soft blue color. And I can use this as part of my sky background, part of my snow background. I can just, it's just a nice neutral soft blue that will be very winter-esque and complimentary all over the place. So once I've got that color, I'm going to use my large brush to start applying it to the canvas. I'm gonna be doing it in a, applying it with a left to right type of brush stroke in through here. And then as I come down this, um, down the canvas, I'm gonna start adding some white every now and again. So I, like I just picked up a little bit of white to introduce or to intermingle with that blue. This way what's gonna happen is I won't just have a solid color as the background and it'll look as if there's a little bit of atmospheric dimension in that background. Again, we'll add snow falling from the sky and other fun um, little atmospheric dimensional elements, but as for the background and just a starting point for us to jump off of, this will certainly work. So I just kind of keep alternating back and forth between my 
custom blue and white on my dirty brush. So this way it can, again, just give me some kind of carefree spots where it's gonna be lighter, it's gonna be darker. I am going to, of course, be having my big tree. I'm gonna have my cute little gnomes. So those are gonna be the things that will be stealing the visual show from um, the viewer. The viewer will be paying a lot of attention to those elements of my painting. So this background that I'm doing is really just background noise, <laughs> for lack of a better terminology for it. It's, it's intended to just kind of be complimentary, set the mood. So I'm setting it into a winter landscape type of mood. I wanted to um, set them outside. So that's where I chose to do this. You could put them inside if you wanted to. You could have the Christmas tree indoors. You could put them, you know, next to the skirt of a Christmas tree. You could really, you know, put them wherever the, wherever you like. So I just keep alternating. This time I picked up both my, my custom blue and some white because we're gonna have the Christmas tree and the, and the gnomes standing in the snow so i've got some light areas and some dark areas again not super important for you to have the the color pattern in exactly the same way that i do we'll be able to as i add the details to it later you'll be able to customize it with little piles of snow with and like little bumps and stuff in the landscape so just allow whatever is going to happen to happen and then we'll we'll add some fun details on top of it later so once you've got this done we are going to be using our same brush for the next step. We'll use this large bristle brush for the next step. And again, don't worry about this being 100% perfect. I'm just kind of right now using a light brush stroke, like hardly touching the canvas just to kind of work out any really thick spots. And then I will wash and dry this large brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to do, we're gonna paint the ground and out of focus um, snow falling in the distance. <laughs> I put, I don't know how else to say it. So what I wanna do with this step, I wanna put the stuff in place that's gonna be behind the Christmas tree and behind our, um, our gnomes, so that way, I don't have to work around those objects once I put them on there. So I want my, my tree and my gnomes to feel like they're sitting or standing in the snow. Like, uh, so I want to have some bright snow behind them. Um, so I want to get that in place before I place those objects. And same thing with, I want to put some kind of out of focus snow falling in the sky. And I want to make sure that it looks like it's natural in the sky as opposed to painting around my Christmas tree, painting around my gnomes. So I want to get that stuff in place now. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are my light blue, white, and maybe a touch of brown and black so I don't go too white on this snow because I do want to save room for later when I add the, um, the final details onto everything and I am gonna have some small pieces of snow in the sky. I want those to be really white, white and in order for that to happen, nothing else can be white, white in the painting. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker than that. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna start with a little bit of white and my light blue on my brush at the same time, just a little bit of both. So this way I can say, all right, I'm gonna have my tree, the bottom of my tree is gonna come down to here. So I'm gonna go up a couple inches from that and I'm gonna put in place, um, like a, a, I'll call it my land line. So maybe there's a little hill of snow behind my tree's gonna come kind of in through here, maybe scoot it over here. I think I need more white on my brush. I'm making it lighter or darker than I want it to be. So I'm picking up a little bit more white. There we go. So I can put this, in essence, kind of just the illusion of there being maybe a little hill or something in place. And then where my um, the bottom of my tree is gonna be, I want that to have a little bit of life to it as well. So I'm gonna just kind of put a little bit more light snow in through there. So again, my tree is gonna be right in through here. So I just wanna make sure that I've got these um, areas kind of 
intermingled before I start to lay that tree on. So if I wanna see a little bit of separation between the land and the sky, I can accomplish it by doing just a minimal step like that. If I want there to be kind of fluffy snow around the bottom of the, um, the tree, I can kind of just allow for these little tiny piles of snow and my gnomes are gonna be somewhere in through here. So this just gives me some nice um, kind of little bit of definition in the snow without doing too much detail to it. So this is looking pretty good for my ground. And then in my sky, I can just take my dirty brush and just kind of do these really faint, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my light blue, just kind of circular type of motions. And this is gonna allow for it to almost just appear as if there's some out of focus snow falling in the distance. Once we get the entire um, painting on and all of the other elements, these you almost won't even notice. They are just gonna be so subtle. Um, I just wanna put them in here. My tree is gonna be kind of flopping over in this direction. I just wanted to have something that gave me more than just a flat background. So this will help, whoops, just knocked it off of there. This will help me to accomplish a lot of um, dimension in that atmosphere. If you feel you go too light or too dark, you can just adjust it, pick up more of that background blue. This also will help to, um, if you have any unpainted spots, like I have a couple of spots over here that seem to be um, not fully rendered. So this will give you an opportunity to just kind of uh, fill in the blanks on those kind of little spots. And you can make them as light as you want. You can make spots as light as you want. You could even use a smaller brush to create these oval type of um, out of focus uh, type of dots, but this is all I'm going to be doing for this step. We're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush. This is where these are. This is one of those steps. I'm like, I don't want to stop. I want to just keep painting, <laughs> but I, I'm done. Um, I'm going to use this same brush, but I'm going to wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for the Christmas tree. I'm using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black and green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be alternating between black and green so I can have some good definition uh, in the little pine needles and branches and stuff. But I want my tree to be very tall, very slender and kind of leaning over so when the gnomes go to put the star on, they can reach it. <laughs> so it's gonna be very whimsical. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna kind of plan out where I want it. So I'm gonna put some green and a little bit of black on my brush at the same time, just a little bit of both on my brush so I can um, kind of plan this out. At the bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna come up maybe two or three inches and then maybe over an inch or so, so somewhere in through there. I do need it to kind of overlap a little bit where I've made um, this kind of transition in through here, but I'm gonna have the branches sticking out, so don't feel like you have to do a straight line. So I'm gonna just kind of start somewhere in through there. It's gonna be coming up, 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 up. I'm gonna have mine, if you go up to the center of your canvas, left to right, top to bottom, or left to right, um, and then just come down maybe about an inch, Somewhere in through here is gonna be the, the tallest part of it. And then I'm gonna have it leaning over to somewhere in through here. So this is gonna hit here. This is gonna then come down and hit here. And this is also, well, let's, let's bring this down about maybe another, I would say inch and a half. This one will go to here, to here, to here. So I'm gonna do my exterior uh, kind of profile of it and then I'll fill in the inside. Again, I'm gonna start with black and green on my brush and I'm gonna do this very whimsical <laughs> kind of way. I'm gonna take it and just kind of pull it out like this and it's gonna give you these fun kind of um, pine tree type of marks. I'm gonna alternate like I just picked up green. I do, as this comes around here, I'm gonna actually start over here because I wanna show you what this is gonna do. So I, I wanted, if this part was to stand up, the branches would, whoops, you probably can't see my hand. <laughs> the branches would kind of go out like this. So as it's leaning over, that means that my branches are gonna kind of come 
in this direction. And then as I come around this corner, they start to turn like this. And then I can just kind of get them to meet in with here. And again, whimsical doesn't need to be perfect. So again, I'm gonna pick up now, maybe this time I pick up a little bit of black. I'll start in through here and now I'm gonna pull them out at, down like this, like this, like this, hit my mark in through here. And then as I come around this corner, this is where they're gonna just kind of flip out in this direction. And I'm, my goal is to get down to this bottom right hand corner. And again, you can see the, the transition that I'm making with the, with the colors. I just keep flipping back and forth between my, my green and my black. That looks pretty good in through there. And then down at the bottom, I'm gonna do a similar thing where I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna kind of, kind of pull it out to the left on the left side pull it out to the right on the right side. And then as I come down towards the middle, I can kind of pull it towards the viewer or towards the bottom of the canvas. So now I've got all my branches or my exterior shape of my tree. Now I can just kind of fill in the blank by taking these colors. I've got green and I can just kind of move up that tree in a going down and out to the left, down and out to the right, and then in that center, you can kind of come down towards the bottom of the canvas. You don't have to fill in every single spot. Um, if you do have a couple of spots that get missed, I'm sure they can get fixed or hidden by snow or by decorations. So don't feel the pressure to make this, every single piece has to be colored in 100%. I think my main goal here is just to try not to overpaint uh, so I don't have a solid color to the tree. Um, and again, if the, if it does go solid on you, it's all right. We can, you know, snow decorations, they can all help to disguise it. Um, but remember, as you're doing this painting, it's whimsical. It's It's got uh, you know, holiday characters to it. It's got gnomes in it, which, you know, might not need to be all too realistic as you're painting. So just know that there's a lot of room for playing and having fun on this painting. Don't ever feel that you have to, you know, get it exactly as mine is. Just let it happen whatever way it's going to happen on your canvas. And that's the way that's going to be the funnest and probably the most you know, appealing to your eye. And then once I've got this done, I'm gonna be using my, uh, I'm gonna use my drawing utensil for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out whatever utensil you're using to draw. I'm gonna use a pencil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our cute gnomes. <laughs> I'm gonna be using my pencil. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that you'd like. I do have my standard number two pencil, but I think I'm also going to, for purposes so you guys can see, I'll be using a white pencil as well so you guys can see on camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you through a series of markers and basic shapes, and by the time we're done, we'll have three gnomes standing on top of each other. <laughs> you can certainly make as many as you want. You could just do one really tall skinny gnome if you wanted to, <laughs> but I'm gonna have them standing on each other's heads. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first guide you into making their noses. <laughs> so we're gonna do three small ovals. So my first one that I'm gonna do is, um, I'm about maybe almost halfway between the edge of my canvas and my tree, somewhere in this vicinity, and I'm up from the bottom of my canvas about four inches. I'm gonna give myself a little oval that's about a, a half of an inch tall by maybe three quarters of an inch wide, so not very big at all. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up from that about four inches, give myself another, oh, this is where I think I need my white pencil, give myself another little oval type of a shape for the next nose. And then I'm gonna go up another about four inches, maybe a little bit higher than that, and go to the left just a little bit. And this one I'm gonna do an oval, but it's gonna be tip, oh, my pencil tip just broke. It's gonna be tipped a little bit to the side like this. So it's skinnier this way and longer this way. This is the gnome that's placing the, um, 
the start on the tree. So that's going to be where I uh, start. Is that where I want that nose? Yeah, I think that works. Um, so now I'm going to go back down to the bottom one. And we're just going to do one piece, like a similar piece on each. So the next thing that we're going to do is the rim of the hat. So I'm going to put a rim of the hat on this one and through here. So I'm just going to kind of drop this down, make this fun oval type of a shape like that right around that hat. I'm going to do the same thing on the next one. So we're just going to keep, I'm going to keep switching my, my pencil, but you could certainly make yours more oddly shaped if you wanted to. This one up and through here, this one's going to be to the side with the head tipped. So I'm going to go up like this and I'm going to bring this um, rim of the hat back down like that. Now we're going to make the hats, the top of the hat. So I'm going to take it from here and I'm just going to give it a kind of a round type of a shape in through here and I'm going to bring the t the tip of the hat something like this again you could make yours whatever way you want I'm just going to have some fun with with my shapes that I need to erase a little bit <laughs> that was a little a little extra long there we go that looks good this one over here I'm going to put this one somewhere in this vicinity and just kind of bring down like this and this one I'm going to have coming just kind of out something like this and again just make them whatever way that you want I'm gonna have this one up here this is the one of the hat that's um, the gnomes head is kind of leaning back so I'm gonna kind of put a little dip down in through there now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the beards on so I've got the beards coming right from underneath the nose well beard and mustache we should call it so something like this and we've got one coming out here and that so that's the mustache and now I'm going to put just a long beard on something like that I'm going to do the same thing for this little guy so just a beard uh, somewhere in, so I go about halfway into the nose a little bit into the um, edge of the, the rim of the hat like that and then you can bring it down somewhere again they don't have to be exactly as mine you can certainly have as much fun with the shapes of these as you want and then I'm gonna do the same thing for this guy up here but this guy again is to the side so it's gonna have a little uh, mustache kind of like this and then the beard is gonna flow back behind that head like that now I'm gonna put the um, feet on <laughs> so I need to put the feet on before I put the clothes on so you know where the clothes is gonna go so this one is down at the bottom he's got to have a pretty solid base to him so I'm gonna put his feet are gonna be way out here so I'm gonna do a curved line for the top of the foot and a flat part for the bottom so I'm gonna put that one there I'm gonna put this one way over here so he's got to have a wide firm stance I'm gonna do this one is gonna be standing on top of this guy's head so I'm gonna have the flat part of the feet one there and one there and then I'll put a round part like this and a round part like this so on this one if you wanted to just erase if you went through part of that um, hat just erase those little lines there so you don't get confused and then this guy up here he's gonna be standing on the head here's the flat part of the foot and here's the round part of the foot like that and again you could erase that little part in through there and then he's got a foot sticking out so I've got the flat part over here this this foot is in the air something like that like that so now I know where my feet are I can put the clothes on so I'm going back down to the bottom I'm gonna start my clothing right um, at the left part of that mustache somewhere in through here I can just bring it down in a long wavy line out past that shoe and then I can bring it across this bottom right to the next shoe. I can start over here, give it like this, and now we've got our piece of clothing. I'll do the same thing over here. So I started the mustache. We'll use a white pencil for part of it <laughs> like this. Uh, bring it down towards that shoe somewhere in through here. And you can have it flowing. This one's gonna go right across the head and then it's gonna kind of come out on this side somewhere in this vicinity works for me and then on this guy up here we've got it well we need a different pencil somewhere in through here bring it past that shoe it's going to be crossing over that head it's going to be coming out 
like this. This one actually needs a little bit of a leg. I'm going to just put a little part like that for that leg. Now I need just need arms and we'll be done. <laughs> so my arms of this guy are going to be holding up this one. So I'm going to put two arms. This is going to be one and a little hand. You can just put a little circle for the hand and then I can erase this little line in through here because this hand, this arm is going to be in front of the hat. So something like that. And then on this side, I can put this arm kind of just going up like this, like this. And then I've got a little hand somewhere in through here like that. This will all make sense when we color it in too, or more sense. This guy here, I feel like he should be balancing. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a couple, couple of cute little arms coming straight out like this with a little circle. We'll put the, we'll make these look more like mittens with little um, thumbs on them later. And this hand over here, I just feel like I would have this one somewhere in through here. And of course, if you needed to erase anything, feel free. And then this one here is going to be reaching up. So like this, and then a little hand like this. And that's all I'm going to be doing. <laughs> I'm going to use my, um, number my medium brush my number six round for the next step so once you've got this done make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel will help you and then you can put your drawing utensils away take out a medium round brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the base coat on the gnomes i'm using my number six round brush the colors that i'm going to use are black green red yellow brown and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of custom colors. I'll be making a custom skin color for the gnome noses. <laughs> and then I'm going to make a custom gray color, which will be the base coat for the beards. Um, but I'm going to put the clothing on first, and then we'll come back to those custom little colors. So I'm going to start with all of my black pieces, which are going to be my mittens and my shoes. And then I'm going to um, move into the clothing. I'm going to have them all wearing a red shirt dress thing and green hats. And so, and then we'll put on their, their beards, mustaches, and noses. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a little bit of black paint and I'm just going to color in. I'm going to actually put a little bit of water on my brush as well because these are kind of tiny little spots. So I'm just painting these in with black paint right now. We will be doing another step later on down the road that's going to put lots of details onto these. So if you're going through this process and your uh, paint is not sinking in all the little crevices or you're getting little streaky marks or you went outside your lines or <laughs> something that you didn't expect happened, don't worry, you'll be able to modify that during the um, little detail process. These hands in through here, these are mittens. Um, so if you felt confident to put a little thumb on there, these this one here, I don't feel like I should be because, well, maybe, oh, there we go, that'll look cute. Because, um, you know, it's underneath the dress. So I might not see it on that one. But these guys here, I would see a little a little mitten so you can put a little thumb on the ones that you feel you would make sense to um, not you know depends on what position your gnome hands are in I'm just you know having fun with putting just a little thumb on my on my gnome's hand um, and then this guy up and through here definitely is gonna probably have a little thumb oh I forgot the shoes on the other one there we go and we got the little shoes right in through here. I'm gonna put black paint, this little leg, I'm gonna put that black too. You could of course put that whatever color that you want. But again, the whole, uh, the idea is just put a flat bottom to the shoe, or at least that's what I'm doing, and um, a little curve to the toe. So that way, as it's sitting on the opposing gnome's head, <laughs> it gives the implication that that's the bottom of the foot. So that's good for all my black things. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush, and then I'm gonna go in for my clothing. So I'm gonna do red for the uh, dress. Now my red is transparent or translucent, which means you're gonna see through it. So as I go through this process, 
wherever my the the um, the color behind my red wherever it's lighter like right in this spot where I've got that white snow behind it or that light snow behind it my red's gonna look brighter and when I go into the darker areas it's gonna look darker I'm not concerned about that right now um, one because I know I've got lots of other little details to go but two I like the varying shades or tones that happen during this process I love to layer my paint and I love to um, let it react against the the colors that are underneath it so you may like to do that or not like to do that but if it doesn't work out for you where you're visually uh, digging it know that one we've got another layer that will be happening and two um, uh, I don't forget what my second thing was. <laughs> we got another. Oh, and the second layer, you'll be able to to modif make any modifications or you know add to it if you if you feel the need to. Uh, if you did also during this step feel like you wanted to use a smaller brush, feel free to do so. I tend to use minimal tools and just work with um, a brush that I feel I'll be using a lot for. Um, for various things but if that doesn't work out for you you could certainly switch to your smaller brush you could also as I'm coming around these uh, wrists of the gnomes I seem to be uh, intuitively just kind of popping them out a little bit like there's little cuffs on their on their shirts so if you wanted to do that you could do that as well and just going right around this little beard here too you could also have um, which I chose not to but you could have painted all the clothing first and then put the you know painted a flat color um, through the entire clothing and then put the the beard on later but I knew that there was these are such small parts that were that we're dealing with and we're going to be doing such minimal detail to them I just figured it would be easier to just draw it out um, this way but there's so many methods to getting the paint on and getting your your rendition or your drawing done so sometimes I just choose to do it different ways um, based on based on the, the the object I'm painting or how much time I want to spend on the painting um, and this was just what I felt to be the most expedited way to do this learning how to paint all the parts or draw all the little parts of the gnomes and then we're just going to color it in almost like a coloring book so at, at times when you're if you do want to go for more of an illustrated type of look like this you can certainly just draw out those little pieces and paint them just individually almost two-dimensional if you will and then just adding the um, the dimensional aspects to them in a future step that that is a nice quick way to do things. So now I've got all those on. I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to go in for the hats, which I'm just going to use my green paint as a base coat. And again, I am kind of um, just doing this uh, without waiting for the other paint to dry. So as I do this, if I do end up um, running into areas that are still wet like I might run into a little bit of red paint that might be a uh, still a little wet it's we're in the beginning stages of this so don't worry if you do in fact run into that I also on these hats have the little rim that I did draw out which means I at some point I want some separation to appear between that rim and the top of the hat if you're, if you used a different drawing utensil than I did, say you used chalk, chalk will tend to disappear when the paint hits it. I'm using pencil, which is visible through my paint, so I can see my pencil mark underneath there. If you can't see your pencil mark and you still want to know where that, um, where that line is, just leave a little tiny space or the evidence of your um, of your outline and that will help you to go through that that step when we do go to um, make the uh, the details of that hat showing the that the rim is separate from the main head part of that hat 
And again, if you're going through this and you're saying, wow, this brush is just too big for these little areas, you could certainly just switch up your brush. I, again, like to work with my bigger brushes when I can. It, it, you know, it gets more paint on quicker, right? So sometimes I just, I just go for it, especially on these beginning steps. When I go into the smaller steps, like I might pick up my small brush for the noses. Um, they are super tiny. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to switch brushes or not, but I'm thinking that this is working so far. So that's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to go in for my two custom colors. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to have, I've pre-mixed my colors on my palette here. So I have a custom gray. This is it right here. How I got to that was white and just a touch of black. I'm going for a pretty light gray um, for my for my beards. I'll add white to them later, but I just need kind of a, a medium to light uh, gray for the base. And then this is going to be my skin color for the noses. How I got to this is a touch of yellow, a touch of red, a touch of brown, and a touch of white. And then I just spun that together and created this little custom skin color. So I'm going to use this as the color for the noses. So once you've got that, you can just start tackling these little noses. And again, if this brush is too big for you, just by all means switch to the smaller brush. I am bringing it right to that green hat part like this. And then once I've got the noses on, I just wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna paint my beards and my mustaches with my gray. I don't, I don't need to do anything fancy here. We'll be putting some little bits of um, fun detail to get them to look a little bit three-dimensional on a future step, but right now my goal is to just get a base color to them. So that way, when I do wanna put some detail to them, I've got my believable color that will help me um, build my way to some fun dimensional elements. So that's looking pretty good. It doesn't even matter what kind of brush stroke you use at this point because it's such a small area that, um, and we're just using this flat color, this, um, gray covers really well so it you wouldn't even detect what kind of brush stroke if you did decide to use a um directional brush stroke it wouldn't really matter at this point anyways and then i'm just going to do this one last one up in through here is a little tiny teeny tiny one is testing my my eyesight right now it's so small <laughs> so just going in through here i'm leaving a little evidence of that mustache being different from the beard so that's what i was talking about earlier if you want to leave those little um evidential lines that will help you to get them to look um, as separate parts and that's all i'm going to do for that step i'm going to be using i think i'm going to use my um Let's get some decorations on here. So we're gonna use this same brush for the next step, my number six round. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna decorate my tree. I'm gonna use my number six round. The colors I'm using are white, yellow, red, and probably some brown. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So when I build these Christmas trees, <laughs> or when I build anything for that matter. I'm always thinking of how, uh, what would happen naturally. So if I went out and got myself a Christmas tree, this is what it would look like first. I wouldn't be decorating it with snow on it. I would be decorating it before the snow got there. <laughs> or if I went outside and decorated a tree, I'd probably decorate it when there's no snow on it. So I've got my non-snow tree. I'm gonna put my decorations on and then we'll put the snow on top of that because that's what makes the most sense to me. <laughs> so I'm going to be making, um, you can do really any kind of decoration you want. I'm just gonna probably do mostly just balls, um, it, like bottle balls and maybe a couple of twinkle lights. But I know I've got a really dark background on here. So if I just take like my red, which I was talking about over on my gnomes and put it on top of this, it would be, you'd see all the color underneath. So I need to kind of add a little opacity to my, um, my decorations 
in order to get them to be as bright as I want them to be. So for instance, what I can do is I can take a little bit of red and a touch of white on my brush and I can put in place a whole bunch of kind of uh, balls. I can put them underneath some of my limbs. I can put them, uh, I'm picking up a little bit more. I'm not putting a lot of paint on. They're gonna look a little pink to start um, but once they dry a little bit, I'll be able to put um, a nice red coat on them. So this is how I'm going to approach it, just red with a touch of white on my brush. You can put as many as you want. You can put them, again, underneath some of the, um, some of the uh, pine needles. You could put them just kind of dangling in front, you can have them large, you can have them small, you can really just make it into whatever kind of decorative element that you want. I'm going to be having the star um, somewhere in this vicinity, so I don't need to do too much there. You could have little balls kind of almost dangling in, an, you know, in this kind of direction. Don't get hung up on making everything super duper perfect, but you know, if you do want them to have that ball look to them, you'll just want to have, you know, a piece of it, it be at least round um, in some in some fashion. So if you have it underneath some leaves or uh, pine needles, just whatever part is sticking out, just make that a little bit on the rounder side and that'll that'll make it look nice and realistic. You could have some kind of dangling off these little edges if you wanted to. So put as many red ones as you want. Again, I'll come back in a second and put some uh, some red red on top of those so they get brighter. But you can see, because I was using two colors on my brush at the same time, I've got some that are redder and some that are lighter. So as I go to build um, the additional brightness on them, that will, that will look really neat. I'm not gonna wash my brush for the next color. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and white. So because I didn't wash my, my brush, I'm gonna get some even additional colors from it. So I love playing with multiple colors on my brush because I feel that it allows me to um, get all of these color variations without too much effort and just by allowing for things to happen naturally. So that just, it work, always works out well for me. So that's, that's how I go about it. Maybe my tree has, you know, just little tiny um, lights in it. You could just put little tiny, maybe I have a string of lights kind of coming along like this. You could, um, if you put them really close together, this is just what I, that yellow, white, whatever little mixture was there, a little bit of red. Maybe I put another little string kind of coming over in this direction. To me, the, um, if you wanted to kind of look a little bit more natural, I think they would kind of almost kind of uh, curve on this little, if you have a string of lights kind of curving in the tree, I think that looks pretty neat. Once I did that one, I want to do more, so I'm going to put one up in here. You get to decorate it whatever way you want. I remember when I was a kid, my mom had so much of that like shiny tinsel on my tree, uh, and I swore I would never have that on my trees as an adult, um, but I have had it on many occasions. So sometimes things just are, are nostalgic to you, and maybe you want to have um, you know a certain kind of like shiny, uh, bobbly thing somewhere on your on your tree that's just reminiscent. Maybe you have popcorn on your tree. I I don't know. You know that was a thing when I was growing up that people would make popcorn decorations or popcorn strings on their um, tree. So if that's something that you did and it is nostalgic and brings a fuzzy fun feeling to you, then by all means put popcorn strings on your on your tree. There's cherries, people put cherries, people put all kinds of fun stuff on the tree. So whatever kind of holiday tree you want, gingerbread little cookies and all kinds of fun stuff, just make it into something that is appealing to you. And this is looking pretty. Um, and once I've got all of this kind of uh, soft tone to these because I used the white in it. What I can do 
Uh, actually, let me put my little star on first, my base coat for my star. So again, this is just going to be that uh, yellow. And how do I want this? So uh, we're just going to kind of put it in the air here. We're going to put lots of glow on it later. A five-point star, something like this. There we go. We'll have our beautiful, cute little gnome ready to to get it on there, to place it on that tree. I'm going to get it again to glow later, uh, but I just wanted to really just get it in place right now. Maybe you want yours already touching the tree, but once I've got all the glow on this star that I that I want to have, it'll almost look like it's touching the tree anyway, <laughs> so you can certainly, and I'm just going to put a little bit in this hand. And then now that I've got this on here, this base coat into here. I'm going to just wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up some red and I'm going to put red on my red ones. If you wanted them to glow a little bit, you could take this. I don't have white on my brush anymore. I just have red. You could take the red and just kind of rub it out and that's going to make it look like it's glowing on the tree. So just a little bit of red and that was too much, just a little bit, and it'll look like it's glowing. So it's just a little trick that you can use to get these to, um, I probably wouldn't do it here too much because that's just the air, um, but the, the little limbs inside the tree, that'll make it, I'll make it look like it's glowing, but the only way that'll work is if you don't have white on your brush right now, just red, and you just kind of rub it over that, um, that bulb. This one right here is, uh, kind of out in the open, so I think I'm just gonna paint that one red. And of course you can make yours whatever whatever way you want. You can have glow, no glow, whatever works for you is totally fine. Oh, I just picked a black, hold on a second. <laughs> we don't know want black. And I said I might be using brown in this step, which I'm not sure, and I'm, I was thinking I would want some little brass type of, or gold looking um, ornaments, but I think I, I think I got it enough with that uh, that yellow color I created, but we'll see if I if I change my mind in a second here. <laughs> and you just can just keep amping up that um, red. And if you wanted a little shiny dot, I just picked up a touch of white paint, and you can put just a little shiny dot. However, we are going to be doing snow on the tree too, so don't worry about too much of these shiny dots. That'll be, you know, just a little accent. So now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and amp up the yellow on the yellow ones. So again, wash and dry my brush, pick up just yellow paint, and then I can sit here and I can add my yellow on top of these. And you can just rub it out for that little bit of glow if you wanted to. Not necessary, but if you felt that you wanted to have that little extra bit of glow around them that'll that'll help you accomplish that and I'm just going to kind of pop these on real quick while I have that a good amount of paint on my brush like that and you could of course once you've got that on there I'm just going to rub it out a little bit so I have a little bit of glow around these guys could put it out there too a little bit here and this is one of those steps that if you wanted to customize it it could definitely you know, take you all day if you wanted to really just amp up every single little twinkle and shine. But I know, again, I'm putting snow on. I'm picking up some white paint now to go ahead and put just a little, a little um, shiny glow on these. And of course, make yours into whatever way that you want. I'm going to do this to the um, star itself too. I might not bring the star all the way right now, but um, I'm going to pick up wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that yellow just to uh, kind of give it the same process. I'm going to pull out some uh, little shiny marks, but I think I'm going to um, hit this the star again later so I don't um, over or underdo it right now But because I know that I want to do some final details on my uh, gnome and that's going to include some of this glow from the from the star. So I think that's about as far as I'm going to bring the star for now. And then we're going to be using, uh, let's see, what are we going to use for the next step? I think I want to use my, um, I want to use my small brush for the next step. So you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the hats and the shirts. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm going to use are green, red, white, black, and maybe a little bit of yellow. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strategically put some highlights and shadows on the hats and the shirts in order to give them form and dimension and then I'm going to decorate them. So maybe one gets some stripes, one maybe one gets some polka dots, just something to give them all their own little, you know, personality. <laughs> so I'm going to start with my shirts. So the red shirts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of red and black. Oh, I'm using my number two round. I don't know if I said that. So I have a little bit of red and black on my brush. Be careful of the black because it can easily take over. So you just want to use a little bit at a time. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow where I think the garment would be dipping in or be shadowed by something. So I feel like there'd be a little shadow underneath my beard. So I'm going to put red and black underneath my beard, something like that. Maybe a little bit up in through here under that armpit area, something like that. Maybe a little bit up in through here and maybe a little bit underneath the cuffs of the sleeve. So maybe a little bit in through there. Not much, just a little bit. Maybe a little bit underneath this hat up in through here or underneath in through here. So that looks pretty good on that one. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do that to all of them. So just a little bit of red and black, just keeping the same color on my brush. Um, makes it a little bit easier for me. <laughs> so just a little bit of red and black underneath my beard, a little bit underneath my armpit in through here, maybe even a little bit on the bottom side of this arm. So just giving myself a little bit of um, a little bit underneath that beard and through there, a little underneath here, a little underneath that sleeve. That looks cute. Maybe a little bit in through here and wherever we're going to put some highlight in a minute. So that looks good on that one. And then this guy here, we've got his beard uh, kind of flowing over his shirt in through here. That looks good. And let's say this is his leg bumping it out. This is his arm. Put a little shadow here for the arm. And then maybe maybe a little bit of shadow in through here. Make that look like it's got some, oh, you know where else I can put it? I'm gonna put a little bit underneath here. Like we're seeing the underside of that garment over on that side. There we go, that adds a nice little dimensional element. Uh, and then maybe right underneath here and this arm right in through there, that works for me. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put red on my brush. And I'm gonna do a second coat of red everywhere on the garments and then I'll use a little bit of white in order to make areas pop out a little bit. So I'm putting a little bit more red in through here and just getting it to maybe overlap that shadow. And in a place like this shoe or where it goes over the shoe, this is where I can pick up a little bit of red and white and give myself a little highlight in through there. Or maybe on the side over here because it's closer to the, the um, Christmas tree, maybe even on the rim or the edge of the dress down and through there or shirt down and through there or in a trouble spot. So I have white behind here. So that was a little bit of a trouble spot. So you can use um, you can use the white inside your red paint in order to give you better opacity. So if you needed to uh, help covering a specific area, you could certainly uh, utilize white to help you through that and pick up a little bit more white to give myself a little highlight on the clothing as it's going over this shoe because I always think that that's super cute on gnome clothing when, the, when it gets, you can see that it's buckling over that shoe. I'm gonna put some on these arms. So this is just red with a little bit of white, just getting those to pop out a little bit, wiping my brush off, picking up just a little bit more red. And then if you did have any pencil marks, like I've, I've got a couple of little pencil marks still showing, I'm just trying to cover them with paint. And if I don't cover them all the way, I can always come back and erase them <laughs> or just bring that clothing out a little bit farther in order to just make sure that you, you've got them covered. So that's, you know, just 
being mindful of those little things if your gnome gets a little bit, you know, healthier along the way, and gets a little bit wider along the way, then so be it. That's, you know, I feel like I'm getting paint all over me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go up to the next one as well. So just red paint on my brush to start to get my second coat on here. Seeing if I have any trouble spots that are gonna need a little help with um, the white as a, as a opacity helper, <laughs> but I think this guy's gonna be pretty okay with that. I'll still add some light areas again over that shoe to show movement in the garment. Uh, make sure my pencil marks are covered. And of course, if you're going through this process and you're saying, mm, I wish I, you know, wanted to do, I could do a different color, go right ahead. If you wanted them to have purple clothes, make purple clothes, you could have them all wearing, you know, white clothing, whatever works for you. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white now just to make sure we know where these feet are. So this is where this foot is. And that's gonna make that clothing go right over it. And I'm telling us a, a visual story. So if I told the story of the shoes having the clothing here, if they got confused between these hands and these feet, well, this is gonna tell them that this is the, the clothing is going over the feet in through here, just like it did on the other one. So just little cues that you can give visually help the viewer understand what's happening. So I'm just wiping my brush off, picking up some more red. I'm gonna go up to this guy up in through here. And again, just doing a second coat right now. And I'm gonna follow the same, same process for the hats as well. So I will just be adding my my shadows in the in the places where I think that they would make sense and then understanding for me my light source, my dominant light source is the Christmas tree. So we can put, you know, extra highlights over on that left-hand side if you want to. I'm picking up a little bit more white. Get that highlight in through there. This one's leg and garment is all in through here, so I'm going to add a little bit of extra brightness. Oh, I just got red in my sky. Hold on one second. Let me wash this off before it gets too dry. It's just a little water on my dirty brush <laughs> to get that off of there before it dries. There we go. It's always easier to get it when it's wet than to wait until it dries. Um, so I was attacking this little highlight here. This is this um, little gnome is the closest to the light source with that um, star it's holding so you can really get some nice powerful um, highlights going on in this one and it'll it'll make sense oh look at that's so cute um, so I'm gonna hit the hats now I'm washing and drying my brush I'm gonna start with a little bit of green and black so doing the same process that I did for the um, for the shirts feel like I want a little bit at the bottom where it's meeting the nose and on this bottom side and through here. So this is just green and black and then maybe a little bit uh, in here above the rim of the hat as if it's kind of dipping in towards the head, something like this. And this one maybe gets a little bit back in through here and here it's underneath the shoe. I don't want it to go all the way black. So again, just kind of cautious about that and then bringing in some I'm just gonna bring in some additional green in there in a minute. It's a little bit down here at the bottom. And now I'm gonna just wipe my brush off and pick up my green. And if you're going through this and you're like, oh no, I just made it all black. Don't panic, just give it a minute, let it dry. And then you can come back and just build that green back on top of it. But I'm going pretty dark underneath uh, here just so it looks like it's being shadowed by the little um, the little elf that or the little <laughs> gnome that's sitting on top of it maybe even a little crease in the hat in through there and just really dark up and through there I'm gonna pick up some more green just to get my second coat on in through here and then I'll do my green and white as the highlight just like I did for the red parts of the clothing so that's good there just another coat this is just the green oxide right now and just this is the time at where I'm, I'm finalizing some of these details. So this hat is now overlapping the little bit of the sleeve. So in that area, I wanna make sure that there's no uh, gaps that I missed. So I'm just making sure that I've got it all the way up there. Now I'm gonna pick up green and white and just get myself 
uh, maybe a little bit more white than that and give myself a nice kind of highlight on the top of that nose, maybe a little bit on that shirt, or um, shirt, the edge of the, the hat over there. And again, this is just kind of on this left-hand side in order to show that it's being the top upper left. I'm gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna go up to the next hat with green and black. I can do the green and black on these two hats at the same time now. So again, a little bit underneath the edge as it's meeting the nose like that, green and black. Put a little bit underneath this side here, maybe a little bit here as it's meeting that one. I'm gonna rub this up just a little bit underneath this foot and maybe a little bit underneath the dress. Uh, I'm, I'm not actually I'm gonna finish this hat before I move on to the next one. I think it's easier because they're, they're so small. I'm gonna pick up some more green, just get this green making sure it blends in with that shadowed part. Not necessary to make sure, but just, you know, get rid of all of your outlines. This is where we, you know, I know that I'm not gonna be hitting these hats again, so I'm just gonna get them as fully rendered as I want. So just getting this on, and I'll put, like I said, I'm gonna put little decorations on them. Maybe just add, give each one their own little bit of personality. I'm picking up some white paint now. Give myself a highlight over here on this kind of upper left of this one. That was a bit aggressive, so I'm gonna just pull a little bit of it off. I guess I really wanted that one to be light. There we go. That looks cute. Maybe a little extra green for there. That was, that was a bit too much for me. There we go, that works. And I'm gonna go up and do that top one. A little bit of green and black. Just giving myself this little shadow on the underside of it. Black and green, give me that little shadow right in through here, wiping my brush off, picking up green. Just get my, my second coat on before I put that little highlight, and then I'll just go through and, and do some fun decorating. When you go to do the decorations, you can have them striped, you can have them polka dotted, you can have little snowflakes on your ugly Christmas shirts, <laughs> you can have whatever whatever you want. It's, you know, your your imagination that's going to steer their um, their fashion sense, I guess. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up a little bit of white in order to get this part to be nice and bright up and through here, a little bit in through there. Again, this one can be the brightest because he's up at the top getting a lot of that. And then I'll just take it. Let me just make sure this head looks nice and this one doesn't have anybody standing on its head so I can give some good volume up there in the top. So now I'm just gonna kind of have some fun. Maybe I'll put um, little white stripes on uh, this guy's wrists in through here. And again, just have fun with this. This is not anything that needs to be exactly as mine. Maybe this one's got, boy, I don't really think I need to do much. Maybe he's got some little um, stripes on on the rim of his hat to complement the stripes on his, um, on his, uh, I don't like that. I'm gonna put green back on. I don't know if I'm gonna do any decorations. Now that I'm seeing it, I'm like, I think I, I think I might like it the way that it is. But I can carry these little cute stripes up on the, um, on the cuffs, cause that's cute. So it's like they're wearing uniforms. So I don't know if I'm gonna, um, make any other decorations. I, I was thinking I was going to, but then I, I as I'm seeing this, I'm like, I just kind of like it the way that it is. So I don't think I, maybe little pom-poms off the, maybe just little pom-poms off the, the edge of their um, hats. That looks cute. So we could do that. Um, I, I don't think I want to do anything else. <laughs> I'm going to use this small brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the rest of the gnomes. <laughs> That's gonna include noses, hair, mittens, and shoes. I'm using my small number two brush. I'm gonna be using white, the skin tone, brown, and black, and maybe some of that gray. 
And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I'm going to start with my black things, which are going to be my shoes and my mittens. This is going to be a very simple process. I'm going to start with just black paint on my brush. I'm going to give these uh, little shoes a second coat with black paint just to make sure that I didn't miss any spots. And then, um, and with a little bit of water on my brush so it gets into the little crevices in my canvas and make sure that I don't um, have any pencil marks left. And then I just pick up a little bit of black and white on my brush. I'm going to put a little highlight on the top of the shoe like this and like this. You could, if you wanted to, put a little line if you wanted there to look like there's a little sole to the shoe. You could certainly put a little line down at the bottom. That's totally fine. And I'm going to do that same process for all the shoes. And then for the mittens, I don't think I need to do a whole heck of a lot. Um, just maybe highlight a little bit where it might be popping out to the viewer. So this one right here, I think is like hidden underneath the dress. So I'm just going to put my black in through there. The, the thumb, I can't even see. So with a little bit of white, maybe the hands, you give them more of a, a dotted type of um, brush stroke. So this will make them look like they're kind of cloth or, you know, like fluffy mittens as opposed to smooth shoes. And then I'm just going to keep doing that to all of them. So here's my Here's this guy up here. So again, just second coat with black paint, uh, making sure I've got it all painted in there. And then just pick up the black with a little bit of white in order to give me my shiny spot on the top of the shoe, like that. And then if you felt you were wanted to see the like little sole, that would work there. And then on um, the mittens, again, Second coat is just to ensure that you've got everything colored in and that it's um, a smooth coat. I think that's one of my um, things is I just, I just want to make sure that I've got everything painted up fully. I don't want it to look like I missed stuff. So I, I make an effort to go back and hit everything a second time. I'm going to just, while I've got the black on my brush, I'm going to hit these guys and then I'll come back with all of my with my black and white mixture on them and you, again you don't need it so this foot is this is a fun foot I think I might bump it out a little bit more and this gives you the opportunity to reshape things or to add you know little additional pieces of information if you felt it was necessary so it you know not only makes it so you ensures that you've done painted everything fully but it also gives you that opportunity to put a second eye on it and just um, make sure that you've uh, said everything that you want to say and put all the information in that you wanted to. So now I'm going to just pick up um, black with white in order to, I've got these little mittens here so I'm just going to kind of tap in a little bit of um, texture to them so they look like they've like they're knitted or something crocheted knitted I love the fluffier the fluffier the the winter clothing the better in my <laughs> my book it just keeps you warmer I don't know if it truly does but I always think the fluffier it is the warmer I'm gonna be so <laughs> that's where I'm going and then these little shoes in through here I'm just gonna see a little these ones are a little bit different so I'm just gonna put a little light part on the side of them and that's all I'm gonna do so I'm gonna be oh I need my 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 beards too. We can't go away without doing the beards. So that looks good. All right. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to do my beards next. So I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to go gray with a touch of brown and I'm going to put some little shadow down right in this area and through here. So this is gray and brown like that. And underneath that nose, just a little tiny bit is on my brush and this is where I'm going to start my directional brush stroke. So I'm just kind of pulling it out a little bit underneath that nose and underneath this area. I'm going to do the same thing on all of them. So gray plus a tiny bit of brown paint. This is going to help to separate the uh, beard from the mustache and give you a um, little bit of movement in that, uh, in that beard. You could also put a little bit of darkness underneath the rim of the hat 
So if you wanted a little bit more brown, and you could go black too. Um, I think that in this case, I just wanted these to be a little bit on the lighter side, so that's why I opted for the brown as my shadow color as opposed to black. And then this is where the little mustache is in through here. So I'm just gonna bring this darkness in through there. That looks pretty cute. So now I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up gray plus a little bit of white and put um, little streaks of the highlights of the beard with gray and white. So you could, this is where I'll pull out a couple of little pieces, but I don't need to do much other than make sure that it covers the edges where it's meeting um, that red or whatever color it's meeting. If you want it to look like there's more movement in it, just kind of give it these little uh, waves. More white is gonna uh, make it stand out more. More gray is just gonna kind of make it look more solid of a color because that's where we started. So the white it streaked in there is gonna allow it to look um, a little bit more dimensional, especially if you put it on the edges and you can just kind of play with it and make it as dimensional as you want. The curlier you want it to look, you can just pull little pieces out those sides. So that'll be the beards. So I'm gonna go up to the next one with a little bit of gray and white on my brush to start it out and just kind of pull out these little fun pieces. And of course, this is just such a tiny, tiny little dudes. So you could, oh, if you wanted them to look like females, you could also put like little braids. Instead of um, the beards, you could put little tiny braids and that would give it a more feminine look to it. Maybe the one on the top is the littlest one of them all and it's a female. You know, you could certainly do that if you wanted to. Um, but I'm gonna go straight with my, my male gnomes with their beards and their mustaches. This can be a little kind of flowing over the shoulder and then just these little pieces flying out in through here. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm going to uh, put, I got a little trouble spot in through here. I wanna just make sure I've got, there we go. Um, I'm going to do the noses. So I'm gonna just put a tiny bit of brown and my skin tone on my brush. So brown and skin tone. I'm gonna to put just a little shadow underneath. So this is brown plus my skin tone. And this is just putting a little shadow underneath to um, give it a little bit of dimension like that. And just at the bottom in through here. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put my skin tone. I'm gonna to put just a second coat of skin tone on there and then I'll pop on a little little tiny highlight in a second but I just want the second coat of skin tone to um, in case you could see some of that background underneath which in my case you could so I just wanted to make sure I had good coverage as I do with everything else <laughs> so that looks pretty good and now I'm going to uh, I just ran my brush through brown, so I don't want that on my brush. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white and pop on a little tiny highlight on those noses. Just make them look nice and shiny like this. And that's all I'm gonna do. Oh my God, they're so cute. <laughs> you could blend this out if you wanted to. If that white dot, that one dot doesn't work for you, just blend it out just a itty bitty bit, but it'll still just be shiny. And then we're gonna use our, um, I think I wanna use my large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your small round away, take out your large bristle, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna make it snow all over the canvas. <laughs> I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I might switch to one of my round brushes to make smaller pieces of snow, but right now I'm gonna be putting snow on my tree, um, maybe a little bit more on the ground, and some flying in the air, and um, I'll be using a couple of different methods. So first I'm going to use a little bit of my background blue plus white. Those are the two main colors I'm gonna be using for this step. If I want to use or decide to use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of my uh, background blue and a touch of white on my brush. Very little bit, like I just kind of tapped it off on my paper towel. I don't want to 
over snow my tree because I think it's pretty cool. Um, but I do want there to look like there's kind of snow in, in the tree. So I'm just putting a little bit at a time. I will put some additional um, white on top of it in, in a little bit. But right now I'm just kind of tapping in as if this if the snow is just kind of resting on some of these branches and because I'm using the blue along with it I'll be able to in a little bit um, put some fluffier white stuff on top of it you can put some on top of your decorations because that's where it would sit you know if you've if you've got a decoration you know popping out maybe there's a uh, some snow sitting on that get some snow sitting on the edges of these branches maybe even you know thicker on one side than it is on the other side it's totally up to you how much snow you want to put in this tree um, but I'm going to try not over um, paint it so I'm just kind of dabbing it at this point and just kind of giving these little thicker spots of snow and in a minute after I've uh, got this on here and kind of made it snow throughout the sky I will come back through and um, put some brighter snow sitting in some of the areas so just um, little bits here and there <laughs> if you had any trouble spots with your um, with your lights this would be a great time to just kind of let that you know work itself out with some snow on it you could even add some additional branches if you felt you know that you wanted some additional pieces kind of coming out you could certainly do that and again just kind of tapping it in letting it maybe maybe this snow under here has fallen off so we're just going to kind of let this happen in through there i'm thinking that that's looking pretty good I dig that so I'm gonna let that dry for a second while that's drying I'm gonna just tackle the bottom of the um, around the the base of here so I definitely feel like I want a little bit of extra stuff maybe there's some on these branches in through here just kind of allowing for the tree to intermingle with the ground I don't want it to necessarily look like we've got the tree floating on top of the ground. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra white right now, maybe in some of this area right around the tree, maybe even around my um, the feet of my gnome. You can pick up a little bit extra white, oh, and some blue, <laughs> and just kind of get it to make it, have it look like it's more natural sitting, you know, or kind of um, pounced in that snow a little bit. So I, th I like that. I think that looks nice and natural around there. Now I want to start adding snow in the sky. So you can do this in a couple of different ways. It works. Uh, there, there's different methods to do it. I'm going to show you a splattering type of method and then I'll show you some polka dots. Uh, you, the splattering you can do with a, with different brushes. Usually to me it works best with a shorter bristled brush, but I'm going to um, do it with my bristle brush and a touch of water and that's gonna give me and then I flick it with my finger so this will give me a bunch of tiny little um, snowflakes all over the place you can certainly put more than I'm putting um, but I'm gonna put some floppy ones in a minute and trying to find some clean white here <laughs> with a little bit of water and I just want to this, you can use this method for stars, you can use it for snow, it can snow in front of your gnomes because, you know, the snow will snow in front of everything, so you can put it everywhere that you want and put just little, little bits up in through here. And then you can also use a smaller brush like your number two round to put just individual pieces of snow. So as you're doing it, if you want that you know really huge snowflakey type of look and you can use white plus your light blue if you wanted to to give you um you know varying colors of the snowflakes oops there goes my brush hold on one second Ooh, assistance from the cameraman on that one it went across the room <laughs> so um so you can use any combination of white plus your um light blue and give yourself 
lots of dots just as many dots as you want and that's gonna look make it look more blizzardy just I try to keep them inconsistent in size so make some big ones make some little ones that's why using different methods for a snowstorm it's fabulous you could even you know put some in front of the tree put them in places where you wouldn't you know necessarily say oh I want to put a big white dot there which would mean in front of one of your little guys you can put it on top of his head you know just making these little organic type of marks all over the place is going to take this cartoon type of painting and give it a lot of life I think that's you know when we're making these kind of paintings it, it's fun to make them cartoony but it's really cool if you can add some some feelings of real life in it even if it is a uh, you know a uh, illustrated type of of painting so now that I've got a whole bunch of snow in there oh my god I so want to sit stand in here you could even put these little you know starbursts of of magical snow in your sky so feel free to just make this as whimsical as you want as you know magical as you want put some stars put some you know magic <laughs> put some Christmas joy into it all over the place so I feel like that's some good some good fun sparkly stuff I'm gonna work on the star on this future step but we're gonna finish the snow here I'm gonna put more white if I can find some clean white on my palette some more white Ooh, that's gonna be some yellow white there we go and I'm gonna put just some bright spots on my tree so I've got just some little popping, just a couple of little pieces of, of bright white. This can help to um, show the edges of the tree. This can help to, um, you know, just amp up the dimensional element on your snow. I'm not covering up all the, that blue stuff. I'm just really, you know, allowing for some, um, some brighter pieces of snow to just kind of show that they're that they're laying down on the tree and they're, they're just enjoying the the festivity of this light of the lights and all that good stuff and then once you've got this done we got we're gonna finish our star for the next step so we'll use our um i think i'm gonna use my small round brush for the next step so finish up your snow put this large brush away take out a small round and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the star. I'm using my number two round. I'm most likely just gonna be using white and yellow, but if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I just want it to glow. I want it to be super shiny, glowy. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of white paint on my brush, and I'm going to uh, get this center area to be nice and light, and I'm gonna start just pulling it out into almost like the rays of the, as if this, uh, little star is just shooting out these bright shiny rays of light. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white and I'm doing this kind of in a dry brush type of a way so it's going to um, dry on on the fly as well as allow me to just keep layering on top of layering. I say dry brush, but I might actually use a little water in a minute, so that's defeating the, the idea of saying I'm using a dry brush. I do want it to glow on my little gnome too, um, so I'm going to add that in a minute too. I kind of want the five point star to be, it, it's a little bit brighter than all these other little pieces I'm pulling out, so as I do that, I'm probably going to amp up the yellow in the, um, in the five point star part, but uh, right now I'm just kind of pulling this out. I want my little guy to look like he's glowing too. So I'm going to put a little bit of um, watered down paint. Just going to kind of pull this, this over. Ooh, not too much though. Just a little bit. I want him to look like he's got a nice yellow shiny glow too. And then just kind of pulling. I want these ones to pull out even farther. <laughs> it's, it's tough when I'm doing this. It's like, ooh, I want more. I just always want more. And just pulling these out even more <laughs> that's where that's where the magic comes right just do what makes you happy pull this down a little bit further 
Okay, I'm gonna start pulling, I'm starting to pick up some yellow now. So my yellow, you're gonna see now that I put that white underneath there, this yellow is gonna be really, really bright. And I can only get my yellow to be this bright with white underneath it because it's so transparent. And that's what acrylic paint does. And certain colors will be more transparent than others. So just understanding that in your own um, uh, tools that you have will help you to build these in a much more, um, be, it, it'll allow you to give the tricks or to, to convey certain stuff in the way that you want as by understanding what's going to be transparent, what's not. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go back in for a little bit of white to, because I wanted these, uh, the five point to be the brightest. So I'm going to just kind of take it out with a little bit of white in these five points. One, two, three, if I can count well, we'll be fine, four, five. And then I would just, once I've got this done, I would just kind of keep, um, I'm gonna walk away from it so I can see it more at a distance. And then if I feel I wanna do anything more, like I just want little kind of glows on this little guy here, like he's really being, illuminated by this shiny star <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna um gosh it's so hard to stop when you're enjoying the process so I'm gonna I think that's good for me I'm going to uh, step away I am going to be using this brush for the next step so once you've got your star done if you can ever stop you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small round. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna go bottom left on this one with white paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours any way that you want. So you could make a special symbol, you could make you know, write out your full name, you could use the date, anything that you want to identify the painting as yours, you could mark it off on the back, anything, it's your painting. <laughs> and that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself an adorable, inspirational holiday image, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.